and blessed day, Super Katins. I am Mam Cha, your learning buddy. I will take you to another exciting and educational learning journey in our Super K Teleskuela. For this special episode, all you need to do is sit back and watch as we gradually unfold all the activities which you will surely enjoy. In this episode, you will be able to explain the advantages and disadvantages of series and parallel connections in home and identify and explain the uses of different electrical safety devices in our house such as breakers, fuses, earthing, and insulation. Electricity, is it a friend or a foe? A friend needed especially nowadays, most of us use gadgets and appliances powered by electricity or a worst enemy that can harm us. I know you are all excited and eager to learn. Let's go! It's time to start your learning adventures! As you perform each learning activity, get hold of your module, paper and pen. Well, well, well! Are you now ready to accomplish your first learning task? If so, listen well as we flash on the screen the activity you need to answer. Direction. Match up the symbols with their correct picture and arrange the jumbled letters. Time's up, Super K teens! Let's now check your answers! How did you fare in the test, Super K teens? Did you hit the perfect score? Wow! You're ag amazing! If not, don't worry! We're just getting started! In series circuit, electricity has only one path to follow. All parts are connected one after another. Electrons flow from negative side of the battery to the positive side. Parallel circuit electricity has more than one path to follow. Electrons can follow different paths as they flow from negative side of the battery to the positive side. Hmm, think about this. If a light bulb is missing or broken in series circuit, will the other bulb light? If a light bulb is missing or broken in parallel circuit, will the other bulb light? Let's find out the answers in these questions after answering the next activity. Identify which of these circuits are parallel circuits and which are series circuits. Write P on your answer sheet if the circuit diagram represents parallel circuit and S if it represents a series circuit. I have a clue. Follow the path of current flow from negative to the positive side of the battery. If the current flows in a single path, it is a series circuit. If the current flows in two or more paths, it is a parallel circuit. In circuit diagrams, the longer line is the positive side and the shorter line is the negative side. Advantages of series circuit It can act as current regulator and does not overheat easily. Disadvantage of this circuit is if a fault happens in one appliance, all the components stop working and the bulbs are dimmer. Advantages of parallel circuit If one appliance is fused, the current continues to flow. The bulbs are brighter. Disadvantages are, it requires a lot of wires and it is prone to circuit overload. Let's go back to the questions before the activity. What do you think is the answer? Very good! All other bulbs will not light 
because the flow of current was interrupted. How about in the second question? Wow! Good job! The light bulb will turn on because electricity can flow in more than one path. Super Keratins! I'm sure you were able to jot down the explanation about series and parallel circuits and its advantages and disadvantages. If so, get your ball pen and paper and continue learning by answering the following activity. Read each item carefully. Write your answer on your answer sheet. Use the following legend. Write S and a happy face if the statement is about advantage of a series circuit and S with a sad face if it is disadvantage of a series circuit. P with a happy face if the statement is an advantage of parallel circuit and P with a sad face if it is disadvantage of parallel circuit. Time's up! Let's find out if you got the correct answer. Very good, Super Katins, for a job well done. When we return, we will be discussing the functions of different safety devices in our house, such as breakers, fuses, earthing, and insulation. So stay tuned after a short break. Trivia! What is this one? What is the importance of this in our house? How can we compare or relate it with people around us? Welcome back, Super k -teens. Are you now ready with another interesting topic? If that's so, let's get started! Electricity is incredibly useful energy resource and essential in modern life. However, it can also be hazardous if not used carefully. The voltage and available current in regular home or business has enough power to cause death by electric shocks or fire. Use of electrical safety devices like circuit breakers, earthing, fuses, and insulation help to protect us from electrical injury. Answer the next activity to test what you already know about electrical safety devices. Good job, Super Katins! You surely hit them right. If not, there will be another activity for you to make up. This time, let's go deeper with our lessons. Electrical safety devices. 1. Circuit breaker has the capability to protect an electric circuit from excessive electric current during overload or short circuit. Its basic function is to interrupt current flow after a fault is detected. Number two, fuse. It protects electric circuits but are not destroyed when activated. Its essential component is metal wire or strip that melts when too much current flows through it, thereby stopping or interrupting the current. Three, double insulation. 
It protects the user of the appliance from electric shock by preventing any possibility of external casing becoming live. The live wire cannot touch the casing even if wires inside become loose. Insulation can be a plastic or rubber material. Voltage overloading may cause sparks or insulation failure. 4. Earthing The act of connecting the metal casing of appliance to earth via wired connection to bare ground. It has usually green and yellow bands around them and protects the equipment and human from an electric shock. 5. Is grounding The current connecting part is connected to the ground, usually uses a black wire. Dangers of electricity include a variety of hazards that include electric shock, psychological damage, physical burns, neurological damage, and ventricular fibrillation, resulting in death. Electricity at any voltage can be dangerous and should always be approached with caution. An electric shock can occur upon contact of a human or animal body with any source of voltage high enough to cause sufficient current flow through the muscles or nerves. The current may cause tissue damage or heart fibrillation. If it is sufficiently high, a fatal electric shock is referred to as electrocution. Dangers of electricity include physical burns. High voltage shocks tend to cause internal burns due to large energy available from the source. Damage due to current is through tissue heating. In some cases, 16 volts might be fatal to a human being when electricity passes through organs, such as heart, called ventricular fibrillation. Fibrillations are usually lethal because all the heart muscle cells move independently. Other dangers of electricity cause interference with nervous control, especially over heart and lungs. Psychologically, electric shock causes our body to experience pain or trauma. Safety precautions in using electricity Avoid water at all times when working with electricity. Never touch or try repairing any electrical equipment or circuits with wet hands. It increases the conductivity of electric current. Never use equipment with frayed cores, damaged insulation, or broken plugs. If you are working on any receptacle at your home, then always turn off the mains. It is a good idea to put up a sign on the service panel so that nobody turns the main switch on by an accident. Always use insulated tools while working. Always be observant of such signs and follow the safety rules established by electrical code. Electrical hazards include exposed energized parts and unguarded electrical equipment. Always use appropriate insulated rubber gloves and goggles while working on any branch circuit or any other electrical circuit. Never try repairing energized equipment. Never use an aluminum or steel ladder if you are working on any receptacle at height in your home. An electrical surge will ground you and the whole electric current will pass through your body. Use a bamboo, wooden or fiberglass ladder instead. Avoid overcrowding of electrical wires. Always check all your GFCIs once a month. A GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter, is a RCD or residual current device they have become very common in modern homes, especially damp areas like bathroom and kitchen as they help avoid electrical shock hazards. Always use circuit breaker or fuse with appropriate current rating. Working outside with underground cabling can be dangerous. The damp soil around the cable is a good conductor of electricity and ground faults are quite common in the case of underground cabling. 
using a spade to dig at the cable can damage the wiring easily. So it is better to dig at the cable by hand while wearing insulated gloves. Always put a cap on the hat or live wire while working on an electric board or service panel as you could end up short-circuiting. The bare ends of the live wire with a neutral cap insulates the copper ends of the cable, thus preventing any kind of shock even if touched mistakenly. Check broken wires. It may cause electric shock. Always take care while soldering your circuit boards. Wear goggles and keep yourself away from the fumes. Keep the solder iron in its stand when not in use. It can get extremely hot and can easily cause burns. Now that you know how to safely use electrical devices, are you ready for another activity? Ready your paper and pen and start answering. Identify what is being described in each statement. Very good, Super k -teens. I believe you are ready for our final task. Again, ready your paper and pen and try this activity. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Let's find out if you have answered the last activity correctly. Number one. Very good. How about number two? Good job. For item number three. Bravo. What do you think is the answer in number four? You're right. Let's go with number five. Correct. How about number six? You're doing great! Let's have item number seven. Well done! What about eight? Correct! Item number nine. Very good! And last number? Very good! Congratulations, Super k -teens. You really did well in this episode. Just before we end our Teleskuela, let's go back to trivia question posed before the end of the first segment. What do you think is the answer? A small fuse like this one is a sacrificial material in electric design. It was designed and placed in a circuit to interrupt excessive current so that damage by overheating can be prevented. We can compare life with our circuit which requires protection from a fuse. This fuse can be your parents, teachers, siblings, frontliners who are willing to risk their lives just to ensure your safety, freedom, and happiness. Are you willing to play the role of fuse being a fuse in order to safeguard the lives of others? Congratulations! Did you enjoy session today, Super k -teens? 
I do hope you learn a lot from your learning adventures. How about giving yourself a great job clap? Again, this is Mam Cha of San Nicolas Integrated School, Cluster 5, leaving you a quote from Marie Curry, Nothing in life is to be feared, only to be understood. Now is the time to understand, so we may fear less. Please tune in again tomorrow, same time, same station, for another learning journey with Super K Teleskuela. Till then, happy viewing!